Hi, this is Sami Zulfikar and you are watching Social Sciences. Today we are going to discuss about subfields of anthropology. Cultural anthropology has the broadest membership of the subfields. The majority of anthropology departments provide courses in all subfields. Uh, the incorporation of fields in a single discipline has historical justifications. The origin of anthropology as a scientific field and of American anthropology in particular can be traced to the 19th century. Early American anthropologists were concerned especially with the history and cultures of the native peoples of North America. Interest in the origins and diversity of Native Americans brought together studies of customs, social life, language and physical traits. Anthropologists still are pondering such questions as uh, where did Native Americans come from? How many waves of migration brought them to the New World? Uh, what are the linguistic, cultural, and biological links among uh, Native Americans and the, between uh, them and Asians? There are also a logical reasons for the unity of American anthropology. Each subfield considers variation in time and space, uh, that is, in different geographic areas. Cultural and archaeological anthropology study changes in social life and customs among many other topics. Archaeologists use studies of living societies to imagine what life might have been like in the past. And biological anthropologists examine evolutionary changes in physical form, for example, anatomical changes that might have been associated with the origin of uh, tool usage or language. And Linguistic anthropologists may reconstruct the basics of ancient languages by studying modern ones. Uh, the subfields influence each other as anthropologists talk to each other, read books and journals, and meet in professional organizations. General anthropology explores the basics of human biology, society, and culture, and consider their interrelations. Anthropologists share certain key assumptions. Perhaps the most fundamental is the idea that uh, sound conclusions about human nature cannot be derived from studying a single population, nation, society, or cultural tradition. It is kind of a comparative cross-cultural approach which is necessary for understanding the human nature. Cultural anthropology is the study of human society and culture. The subfield uh, that describes, analyzes, interprets, and explains social and cultural similarities and differences. To study and interpret cultural diversity, cultural anthropologists engage in two kinds of activities. That is ethnography based on fieldwork and ethnology based on cross-cultural comparison. Ethnography provides an account of a particular community, society, or culture. During ethnographic fieldwork, the ethnographer gathers data that he or she organizes, analyzes, and interprets to develop that particular account, which may be in the form of a book or an article or a film. Traditionally, ethnographers have lived in small communities and studied local behavior, beliefs, customs, social life, economic activities, politics, and the religion. The anthropological perspective drive from ethnographic fieldwork often uh, differs radically from that of economics or political science. Those uh, fields focus on national and official organization and policies and uh, often on elites. Uh, however, the groups that anthropologists traditionally have studied usually have been uh, relatively poor and powerless. Ethnographers often observe discriminatory practices directed towards such people who uh, experience food shortages, dietary deficiencies, and other aspects of poverty. Political uh, scientists, on the other hand, tend to uh, study programs that national planners develop, while anthropologists discover how these programs work on the local level. Cultures, um, because they believe that cultures are not isolated. Whereas if we talk about ethnology, ethnology examines, compares, analyzes, and interprets the result of ethnography. The data gathered in different societies, 
ethnologists use such data to compare and contrast and to make generalizations about society and culture looking beyond the particular to the more general they attempt to you know identify and explain cultural differences and uh, similarities to test different hypotheses and to build um, theory to enhance our understanding of how social and cultural system works ethnology gets data for comparison not just from ethnography but also from the other subfields uh, particularly from archaeological anthropology which reconstructs social systems of the past by using physical evidence archaeological anthropology reconstructs describes and interprets human behavior and cultural patterns uh, archaeologists discover artifacts material items that have humans um have manufactured used or altered at places where people have lived or have previously lived examples of these artifacts include tools weapons campsites buildings and trash ancient trash animals and plant remains and remnants of ingestion of all provided information archaeologists can distinguish between collection and cultivation because wild and domestic grains have different traits when assessing whether a species was wild or domesticated an examination of an animal bones can provide further information including the ages of the killed animals as well analyzing such data archaeologists answer several questions about ancient economies um did the group get its meat from hunting or did it domesticate and breed animals or killing only those of a certain age and sex did plant food come from the wild plants or from sowing tending and harvesting crops did the residents make trade for or buy particular items um, were raw material available locally if not where did they come from from such information archaeologists reconstructs pattern of production trade and consumption there are two major disciplines of archaeology prehistoric archaeology and historic archaeology within these groups are sub disciplines based on the time period and the civilization or the types of artifacts and features studied prehistoric archaeology deals with civilization that did not develop writing artifacts from these societies may provide the only clues we have about their lives archaeologists studying the clovis people for instances have only arrowheads uh, called projectile points and stone tools as artifacts the unique projectile points were first discovered in clovis and uh, in new mexico in the united states and the culture was named after the town so called uh, clovis points established the clovis people as one of the first inhabitants of the north america archaeologists have dated these clovis points to about 13000 years ago where whereas if we talk about historic and archaeology it incorporates written records into archaeological research one of the most uh, famous examples of historic archaeology is the discovery and uh, decipherment of a rosita stone the rosita stone is a large slab of marble discovered near rashid uh, egypt by french archaeologists in 1799 it became an important tool of historic archaeology the stone is inscribed with a decree made on be- behalf of pharaoh uh plotemy 5 the decree was written and carved into the stone in three different languages archaeologists use the particular in carved language and were able to uh translate it and this knowledge has contributed vastly to our understanding of egyptian history historic archaeology contributes to many disciplines including religious studies um the dead sea scrolls for instance are a collection of about 900 documents the tightly rolled uh, parchment and other writing sheets were found between 1947 and 1956 in 11 caves near korman uh, west bank near the dead sea 
Among the scrolls are texts from the Hebrew Bible written in Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek. The Dead Sea Scrolls are the oldest versions of a biblical text ever found, dating from between the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE. The scrolls also contain texts, psalms and prophecies that are not part of today's Bible. Discovery of the scrolls has increased our knowledge of the development of Judaism and Christianity as well. Now we are going to talk about biological or physical anthropology. The subject matter of biological or physical anthropology is human biological diversity in time and space. The focus on biological variation units five special interests within biological anthropology. Number one is your human evolution as revealed by the fossil records. And then we have human genetics. Third, we have human growth and development. Fourth one is human biological plasticity. And that is uh, how the body's uh, ability is to change as it copes with stress such as heat, cold and altitude. And the fifth point is the biology, evolution behavior and social life of monkeys, apes and other non-human primates. These interests link physical anthropology to other fields, biology, zoology, geology, anatomy, physiology, medicine and public health. More than a century ago, Charles Darwin noticed that the variety that exists within any population permits some individuals those with the favorite characteristics to do better than others at surviving and reproducing. Uh, genetics which developed later enlightened us about the causes and transmission of this variety. However, um, it isn't just genes that cause variety. During any individual's lifetime, the environment works along with heredity uh, to determine biological features. For example, people with a genetic tendency to be all will be shorter if they are poorly nourished during childhood. Thus, biological anthropology also, you know, investigates the influence of environment on the body as it grows and matures. Among the environmental factors um, that influence the body as it develops are uh, nutrition, altitude, temperature, disease, as well as cultural factors such as standard of attractiveness. The next branch is linguistic anthropology. Uh, we don't know and probably never will when our ancestors acquired the ability to speak. Although uh, biological anthropologists have looked to the anatomy of the face and the skull to speculate about the origins of language. And uh, primatologists have uh, described the communication systems of monkeys and the apes. Uh, we do know that grammatically complex languages have uh, existed for thousands of years. Linguistic anthropology offers a further illustration of anthropology's interest in comparison, variation and change. Linguistic anthropology studies language in its social and cultural context across space and over time. Some linguistic anthropologists make inferences about universal features of languages are uh, linked perhaps to uniformities in the human brain. Others reconstruct ancient languages by comparing their contemporary descents and in so doing make um, discoveries about history. Still, um, others study linguistic differences to discover varied uh, perceptions and patterns of thought in different cultures. Linguistic and uh, cultural anthropologists collaborate in studying links between language and many other aspects of culture such as how people uh, you know get into kin kinship and how they perceive and classify colors last but not the least we have applied anthropology applied anthropology um, is basically of the view that um, anthropology is not a science of the exotic carried on by old-fashioned scholars in ivory towers. Rather, anthropology has a lot to tell uh, the public. 
Anthropology's foremost professional organization, the American Anthropologists Association, has formally acknowledged our public service role by recognizing that anthropology has two dimensions. One is academic or general anthropology, and the other one is practicing or applied anthropology. The later um, refers to the application of anthropological data perspectives, um, theory and methods to identify assess and solve contemporary social problems. Applied anthropology is the field of uh, inquiry concerned with the relationship between anthropological knowledge and the uses of that knowledge in the world beyond anthropology. More and more anthropologists from the four subfields now work in such applied areas as public health, family planning, business, economic development and cultural resource management. Applied anthropology actually encompasses any use of the knowledge and or techniques of the four subfields to identify, assess and solve practical problems. Because of anthropology's breadth, it has many applications. For example, applied medical anthropologists consider both the sociocultural and the biological context and implications of disease and illness. Perceptions of good and bad health along with actual health threats and problems uh, differ among societies, various ethnic groups recognize different illnesses, symptoms and uh, causes and have developed different healthcare systems and tra- treatment strategies. So applied anthropologists sometimes work with the public archaeologists assessing the human problems generated by the proposed change and determining how they can be reduced. So their basic focus is on practice and they want to, you know, put their information or their knowledge into practice so that they can solve the problems of human society. So this is all about branches of anthropology. If you have any question regarding it, you can comment in the section below. Thanks for watching.